Okay, guys, here's one thing I want you to explain to me. Now, when it comes to uh, being a baby face, you really do want a top heel or somebody who gets a lot of heel heat to promote the baby face by being so bad and so mean that you're re literally rooting for the baby face to, to take down the heel, right? So does it make any sense for the chairman of the board to go against your top baby face and say you want your top baby face to be dust in the air or you just want somebody to beat him and how insincere he is? You're actually making him look like a villain? Are you trying to turn him heel? I mean, I don't know. Like, are they really trying to turn John Cena to be a heel? Are you teasing it again or is this something you're going to actually do? Because Daniel Bryan is way put over by the crowd. We all know this. The Yes Champ put him way over. The, I mean, Daniel Bryan, period, is way over. Especially fans who are, people who are fans of ROH. Honestly, you're trying to discredit Daniel Bryan saying that he can't really beat John Cena. And then you're trying to discredit John Cena saying that John Cena is, is a conniving guy that's underhanded and he'll say anything he wants in your face, but then he says another thing behind your back. What are you trying to do? I don't know. If anybody really knows what's going on and what they're trying to do, please leave a comment in the comment section below because my head hurts. Um, Mark Henry is looking weak. Very, very weak. Ever since he did the, probably the best fake out, the biggest fake out in WWE history, he was promoted well as a monster heel. Then he loses to John Cena only to be a face and literally have to team up with the Usos to beat the Shield when this is something he could possibly do all by himself. Yeah, this makes him look really weak. I don't know what they're doing with Mark Henry, but I don't really don't like where it's going and I'm not really sure where it's going. But the one thing I will say, my big positive... Huge, bright, shining spotlight of the night is two matches. Not one, but two Divas matches, people. And it's all because of Caitlyn and AJ. Yes, I said it. Caitlyn and AJ feud is the best thing in the Divas division since sliced bread. Not only did it actually push a show all about the Divas, it actually gave us two Divas matches in one night. The first match was AJ versus Caitlyn. Now... With age, with with AJ Lee, there's always this hidden thing about her and a guy and something else and a guy and her being with a guy and a guy hitting on her or something about a guy. It's always about a guy. Now, when it, now Biggie Langston has to be the new guy, I guess. But let's face it, he's just gonna be used until he gets sick of her and then he's gonna go on somewhere else. Because let's face it, now Biggie Langston is a purse holder. Now, what I mean by that is that for everybody that has been in a mall or has been in a store, you know what I'm talking about. There's this one guy that's either shopping with his girlfriend or shopping with his wife, and he's holding her purse while she's sitting there yapping at him. Me, 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 me. Like a chihuahua. Yeah, that's exactly what Biggie Langston is. He is a purse holder with giant muscles and very long underwear. That's just what he is. He really does need a big boost in his career. But I will say this. The spinoff of this feud spinned off into something that's going to be epically awesome, in my opinion. Biggie Langston versus Dolph Ziggler. A feud in the making, something I am looking forward to happening. And I'm hoping it happens at SummerSlam. Because honestly, these guys really do need to go at it. Biggie Langston needs something for his career. Good grief. I'm getting really getting tired of the whole bodyguard thing with the giant arms. Like, I'm really getting tired of that. He really does need to get pushed on to something else. And who does it better than Dolph Ziggler? Seriously. And we all know that somehow AJ is going to mess it up like he did this previous night when he act when she actually got in the way of Biggie Langston. But honestly, she's going to pretty much use Biggie Langston he until he gets sick of her. Or sick of her voice. And he's like, look, I'm done. I'm finished with you. Peace out. I'm, I'm gone. But until then, it's going to hash out probably one of the best views I've been really, really looking forward to in a very long time. And here comes the second Divas match. Natalia versus a Bella Twin. I guess it's Brie. I don't know. But it's a Bella Twin. Now, after watching Total Divas, which one of my, now it's becoming my favorite WWE show. 
it really does make me sad because it really does make Natalia look like an ugly duckling. This chick is a veteran. Not only that, she is good at what she does. And not only does she look bad on the show, she ended up losing to a Bella Twin. Yeah, that's another video in the making. And I really do have a feeling that she's going to take a trip to the graveyard. Oh yeah, she's taking a trip to the graveyard. But moving on from there, pretty much I am getting sick to death of I, I, I'm really really getting tired of Paul Heyman like seriously I'm really getting sick of Paul Heyman Paul Heyman is a great guy on the mic he will always be a great guy on the mic but it's just to the point where he's becoming way too predictable like he really is you can I mean especially when he says Brock Lesnar or Curtis asshole like you just get tired of him talking like that and I'm really it's so much, I, you're starting to predict everything that he's about to say. And it's nothing really special about what he says anymore. And I'm really hoping that this feud will die out at SummerSlam. Because I'm just tired of him talking. I really am. Is it just me? Or is everybody else getting tired of him talk? Because I know I am. And I, it's always great to see CM Punk go out there and beat the crap out of Curtis Axel. Because I really don't think there's anything, anything special about him anyway. Except for the fact that he happens to be um, uh, Mr. Perfect's son. Like, seriously. There's really nothing special about Mar uh, Curtis Axel. Nothing, in my opinion. But, there's another thing that kind of puzzles me. Why did you bring back RVDs for him to be in random matches? Like, seriously. What are you going to do with RVD? Is he just like Chris Jericho there just to put people over and that's it? You make all this hype about him coming back, and then all of a sudden, you have him in random matches, especially with Fandango, a guy that used to be way, way, way put over with his song, but now people don't care anymore. What are you planning on doing with RVD, man? Like, seriously, put him in a decent feud. Or at least have him work towards a belt. Have him there for a reason. Before, and I know I am guilty of this, I always say that the veterans were always there to put the new talent over. But at least have them look good while doing it. Chris Jericho looks good when he does it. And he's infused. What has R.E.D. been in since he's gotten back? Nothing but random matches. Put him in something, man. Seriously. Come on. Throw the guy a ball. But honestly, let's move on from all that to the main event of the night, which happens to be Ryback versus John Cena. Now, this was a great match. It was pay-per-view worthy. I will say that. Always awesome. But in the end... Everything that made John Cena look good made him look bad in the instant when Daniel Bryan came out doing his yes, 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 yes chant, which made John Cena look worse than he already does look. I don't know what they're planning on doing. More than likely, maybe they're gonna do a heel turn. I have no idea. But if they're gonna, if they're really risking to lose money, it's on them. But honestly, it was a pretty solid show. I am not going to hate on it. It was uh, pretty entertaining in my opinion. There were some things I was completely confused about. Some things I really can't figure out. But it wasn't a bad show overall. I will say it was pretty solid. But I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Leave your comment in the comment section below or send me a video response on what you think about Raw. Or what you think about the whole John Cena thing. Or whether you think the whole the McMahon should really not be a part of it. Like, honestly, I really want to hear what you guys have to say. It's Nature Girl 30 signing off. Peace out.